Eric and Sam. George Kittle just signed for five years, $75 million. Uh, a lot of guaranteed money as well. What are your thoughts and reactions to him becoming the highest paid tight end in the league? You know, I think it's a good example of when you look at, you know, San Francisco, they had some, you know, forks in the road this offseason. And I think that they made the right choice. I mean, uh, DeForest Buckner ended up with over 20 million APY. They ended up with a first round pick for him. You know, got Javon Kinlaw on a rookie deal in his stead. George Kittle, the much more valuable player, they end up getting him at 15, you know, ish million dollars uh, per year. Uh, it's a great move by the 49ers in an offseason where, you know, they could have sort of done more of what Kansas City did and sort of run it back with a bunch of big contracts. I think they were more choosy. And as such, I think, you know, win the offseason in some cases. I think it's a great deal for them. Look, Kittle, it's a lot for a tight end, but Kittle is a lot for a tight end. So I think it makes a ton of sense. The 49ers value him as their number one threat in that offense. He's by far the most targeted player in that 49ers offense over the past couple of seasons. He's a number three targeted tight end in the NFL, but he's by far number one over the past two years in terms of yards after the catch. That guy catches the ball and then wrecks defenses for big plays after the catch. So I think signing him up long term is, is a huge move for them. He's integral to that offense. Yeah, I think he fits that offense so well. And when I compare him to a guy like the other great tight end in the league, Kelsey, they do totally different things. You know, Kelsey is more of a receiver, uh, just a big bodied receiver, and, and it fits what they want to do, spread him out in Kansas City. And with Kittle, he is the, your kind of prototypical tight end, which we kind of don't even see that much anymore. Um, a guy who can run out and stay in line and block. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous player. I mean, gets after it in the run game and then really uh, finds ways to find soft spots in zone coverage uh, in the passing game. Just a tremendous player, and they did a great job signing in long term. Yeah, speaking of somebody who's been a tremendous player in the league uh, for quite some time, Everson Griffin signs a one-year, $6 million deal with the Dallas Cowboys. Sam, what do you think of this deal? I kind of like all of these, you know, late towards the season, low-value, low-risk veteran additions. I think almost all of them are good pieces of business. And they're kind of designed that way, right? These guys have been biding their time until the right deal arrives and, and they snap it up. Look, Griffin can still get after the quarterback. He may not be an elite pass rusher right now, but he finished the season, I think, ranked 13th in terms of total pressures at PFF. But through week 11, he was number two. He trailed only Danell Hunter with 58 pressures in 11 weeks last season. That's some pretty good going. This guy can still be a real impact player for Dallas, especially early in the season, I think, where he'll have his best effect. Yeah, I think this is great for Dallas and, and you know, for Griffin, too. They lose Robert Griff, uh, Robert Quinn, and uh, so they come out and they get uh, Everson Griffin. Different style of player. I think Griffin is more of a power player, um, you know, a heavy heavy type of defensive end doesn't have a lot of moves quick moves but he gets after the quarterback uh so the and, and cowboys still don't know what's going to go on with randy gregory so they needed they needed a player right now to go opposite demarcus lawrence and they found one and i think it's a really good deal i think one of the biggest mistakes that mike zimmer has made over the past you know few years is not taking pressure off of some of his ends. I mean, you know, Griffin has the most sacks among the players, you know, lined up at right end over the past few years, Demarcus Lawrence left end. He comes into a situation where he doesn't have to play this, the 950 snaps that he played for Minnesota. I think that makes him more fresh. I think that makes him less of a candidate to sort of peter off as the season progresses. This is one in yet a number of great moves that Dallas has made this offseason, first of which is signing Mike McCarthy to be their head coach. Absolutely. Um, not to preempt the question, but speaking of great moves, the Bills lock up Sean McDermott, their head coach, to a long-term extension. There's pretty much no way of looking at this other than saying it's a great move, right? Yeah, I mean, look, they, they what he's done in building that defense and kind of transitioning, I think, um, it remains to be seen, but I think to kind of a new style of defense that we're going to see in the NFL, which is more too high quarters base. I think that's coming to the league soon, and, and he'll be one of the guys who who's at the forefront of that, uh, even even back in his days in Carolina. He, he's hired good people. I mean, I really like the offensive coordinator he has there in Brian Dable. I don't think the offense necessarily fits Josh Allen, but I think he's a good offensive coordinator. And, you know, what? They, again, what they do on defense is legit. They, they he's, He partners up with, with Brandon Bean, the GM, very well. This is just a tremendous move, a tremendous coach uh, for, for a team that, 
might be pretty good this year. Yeah, I, what I really like here is that, you know, they don't let the Josh Allen thing get in the way. I mean, obviously, McDermott is sort of obviously coupled with the, you know, the, the third year player from Wyoming, but it's not, you know, completely up to him whether or not they succeed. I mean, in 2017, they had seven and a half wins on their team in terms of war. They won nine games. In 2018, they had six wins, but only four and a half. Uh, comprised about you know wins above replacement among their teams, and then yes, last year they were they won ten games and had only seven and a half wins on their roster. He continuously does better than you know the cards that he's dealt, and and I think that that you know that's the mark of a great head coach. So this is a great move, and I think Buffalo, with, whether or not Josh Allen works out for them as their quarterback, is in good hands uh, with Sean McDermott. I think they've done a great job of surrounding Josh Allen with a good situation. You know, when he came into the NFL, it did not look like a particularly quarterback friendly environment in Buffalo. And now it really does. I mean, the receiving group around him, the defense, and I think the defense is really where it speaks to how good McDermott is because, you know, we get a lot of crap at PFF because we don't grade their individual defensive players that well overall, but the defense always plays well. I think what you're seeing there is basically coaching in action. You're seeing a scheme that's able to become greater than the sum of its parts. And that effectively is what being a great coach is all about. So I'm with you guys. I'm 100% on board with the idea that this is a great long-term signing for the Bills and should enable them to really rival you know, the Patriots long-term with no Tom Brady. Belichick is still there, but maybe the Patriots are the coming force in the AFC East now. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.